Uh-huh. I sure will. A good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. <laughs> Got a radio show. Um, five things that I know successful people have to do. To be successful, the principles are the same. You can apply it to anything. You know, if you want to be happily married, you know, whatever it is, the principles of success are the same. There are a series of things that you have to do. You cannot skip the steps of success. If you do, you're going to have to go back and step on them anyway. So here's, 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 a, here's a part, man, that I want you all to understand about me and, 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 and about how to look at it. You know, uh, you, you cannot underestimate faith and prayer. You just can't. You cannot underestimate the power of faith and the power of prayer. See, for me, this is just for me now. This ain't in the scripture nowhere. This is just something I discovered. What prayer did for me was, was it tied me to my creator. It gave me a sense and I'm describing it this way, but I'm telling you it's deeper than this. But it gave me a sense that I wasn't alone. And in actuality, I wasn't. But prayer helped connect me to the power source that was available to me to get through, get around, or get over whatever it was that was in the way. Whether it was just a period I stretch I had to go through of hard work. It had a period I had to go through to learn some lessons. Uh, some periods I had to go through from having to pay for some of the mistakes I've made. Whatever the case may be, prayer gave me a decided advantage. Especially, uh oh, here we go. Especially over my enemies. Now, the majority of people in my life that were my enemies, I didn't want them to be my enemies. Make no mistake about this. But through the thing called life, some things went down, some things happened from here and there and went over here and over that way, and a person became my enemy. The majority of enemies I had came out of nowhere. I I have no reason to even see why they are my enemies. But, you know. Life goes on, man. It happens from time to time. Some some people just won't let it go. See, some people in their uh, quest to do something to you or to make you pay, they just won't let it go. Well, it may cause you some discomfort and some of it may be lies about you and, and all of this and all of that, but you that, that, that can't prohibit you from going forward. So what I'm saying is prayer, gave me the strength, wisdom, understanding, and courage to either go through it, go around it, or go over it. But it happened. I do not know how I could have made it without faith and without prayer. It it would have, something would have got me. YouTube would have got me. The bloggers would have got me. My partners that I grew up with that used to laugh behind my back, they would have got me. My friend that went over to my mother's house one time and told her, you know what Steve's problem is? He out there telling them jokes. He just lazy. He don't want to work. That would have got me. They didn't know. I ain't really mad at them because they was just, all they was doing was basing their uh, conversations and passing judgment based on what they knew based on what they believed. They didn't believe I was going to make it. But but that's them, though. If it was not for faith, which is the belief in things that you cannot see, I wouldn't have made it. Because I would have listened to everybody else who didn't see me getting here and went along with it. And then prayer, oh my goodness, man. How many times has prayer bailed me out? Prayer has bailed me out. Prayer still bailing me out. <laughs> Tell you the truth, man. Quiet as it's kept. Prayer. That connection 
to your heavenly father, that connection to your creator, that connection to that source of power and inspiration, that connection of never feeling that you're alone. You know, I was watching uh, Bishop Jakes on uh, TV yesterday, and it was a repeat. And one of the things he was talking about, well, let me just get to the gist of it. I was going through a portion of my life and I, and, I, and I went through it for some years, y'all. I had gotten myself into a jam that lasted for years. I'm telling you, for years, with some serious consequences to follow for years. And I was so busy looking at where I was at. I was sulking sometimes, man. I'd get on the radio, man, I'd be just done. I was sulking. My, 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 my spirit had gotten low. I had gotten tired of the fight. And I, I, would, I would come on some mornings, man, and I would try, I would try not to let on, but I was hurting. I was, because I had been in it for years, man. I had been in this thing for years. And one thing I was doing, I was so busy looking at where I was at. And when I was watching Bishop Jakes, he, he preached this sermon. He was talking about so busy looking at where you at that you don't even realize that God has been with you the entire time. And you know what, man? Just yesterday, just yesterday I heard this. And I text him. I text Bishop Jakes and I thanked him because it was an old message I could tell. And I called, I text him up and I said, man, thank you so much. I was just watching you on TV. And you told me, man, something that, I, that I'll always remember, that whatever you're going through, that he's there with you the whole time. But see, well, sometimes when you're so busy looking at where you at, you don't even notice where he is. And see, sometimes, man, that, that helped me. And that's going to help me in the future to realize that what I'm going through, that he's there, he's there with me and he's going to protect me and he ain't going to let my enemies overcome me and he ain't going to let nobody overtake me and he ain't going to let me go under because he's there. It's just you can't be so busy looking at where you at that you don't take notice of where he at. God is always there. He's always available. And the best way to tap into that and know it is you got to pray. Prayer has changed my life. Prayer can change your life. You can become something if you just pray. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have it, please, your undivided attention. This is an official notice that the Steve Harvey Morning Show is now underway. We will be taking applications for people who want to enjoy the ride for the duration, the entire four hours. For those of you that have to go to work and have to get out the car or get on the train or get out for various reasons, we do understand, but please pull the drawstring in time so we can slow down. Other than that, our ass is going full blast and you must dive, <laughs> drop, and roll at your own risk because we ain't stopping this here show for nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, on and cracking, Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry. Can't stop, won't stop. Good morning, Steve. Mm-hmm. Okay, Carla Pharrell. You enjoy the ride. Good morning, Steve and crew. What's up? Let's get it locked, Junior. Y'all better find something to hold on to. Morning, everybody. <laughs> Stupidity. All in the building. <laughs> right here. Right here. Boom. <laughs> well, what's happening? I ain't nothing, you know, just mm-hmm. living, living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> That was a song. I ain't going back and forth. What you? Mm-hmm. Come on. What? Why are you singing Living like my that? best life. <laughs> so <stupid. laughs> well, at least you skipped it. Yeah, but you exactly. know, that's that well, Roscoe Wallace. Roscoe uh-huh. Wallace should come on and do the hits. Okay. Because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, th- I think he would come on and tell y'all that he had something to do with that. Yeah. I like. Well, what's, okay. what's yeah. wrong with the present? There's yeah. no time right, like the present. Right now. You know, well, he just tell like us that. about living your best life. You wrote that? Did he write that? I mean, let me go get him. Hold on. Go on, boy. Get in here. That's what I'm you talking about. Like. Get in there, boy. Let's go. <laughs> not, not down go the hall, Roscoe. Go get your people. Roscoe. <laughs> yeah.
That would have made me cry. Did he whistle? Yeah, he whistled. <laughs> what, what do you mean, see? It's going right here or y'all go right there? You got a minute, Roscoe. <laughs> hey, what's happening, everybody? Steve <laughs> Holland, the hall, don't we cool down? <laughs> what's going on, baby? <laughs> what is what, 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 what the problem is? <laughs> of all the y'all that don't know who I am, because you ain't never heard me on radio before, I'm Roscoe Wallace. I done never wrote damn near every hit that is a hit. <laughs> well, Roscoe, we was we was yeah, asking right. about Lil Duval living my best life. Oh, my mm-hmm. man, Lil Duval, mm-hmm. <laughs> living my no, best life. I wrote out, yeah, I wrote that for. I knew his father. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? What was his father? What was his name? It was oh, Lil okay. Duval. His daddy name was Big RuPaul. What? <laughs> 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 See right there, anybody know that? Uh-uh, we, we're going to have to come back on that one. That's what I You want me to stay here? You want me to go over there? Or something. Over hall? <laughs> what do you want me to do, Jay? You want me to stay here? Right. go over hall? Just hang on. Hang on. All right, y'all going to hang on. One song up. Hold it on. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that, too. <laughs> LTD. Stop. <laughs> I'm full of hits. <laughs> well, we want to see how it really talented Damn you thing. are. Okay. Uh, Roscoe, because coming up, um, we also have Sister Odell in the building. So at 32 oh, minutes here? after the hour. Mm-hmm, what? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be exhausted. Oh, yeah. oh, working oh, today, baby. All right. Oh, we'll check it out. Right after this. Oh, I'm going to have to get up out of here. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann will be here with today's national news and headlines. But, uh... Right now, it's time for the nephew to run that prank back. Eight and two. Eight, Eight and, two. and two. Eight and two. Yeah. Uh, I'm, hey, I'm trying to get some answer. Uh, yeah, well, this, this Sam, this Sam. Sam, okay, Sam. All right. Hey. Yeah. Uh, okay, I thought it was Samantha. Okay, this, this, this Sam? Yeah, it's Sam, man. What's up? Okay, uh, hey, my name is Calvin. I wanted to uh, reach out to you, holler at you about, uh, about, uh, about your girl, right? Your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, she is. Okay, how long y'all been together? We've been together about, about 10, 11 years. Why, what's going on? Well, listen, me and been hollering at each other for like the last few months or whatever. I wanted to reach out to you, you know, she not want to call you, she wanted me to call you. I wanted to tell you that, you know, didn't decide that she want to start hanging with me. I'm, she want me to come over to the house and pick her stuff up. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, really? Really, that's what's going on. You calling me. She done told you to call me and tell me this. Basically, what I wanted to do, Sam, is just have a man-to-man talk with you and just let you know. Yeah, that, well, you, know. you, you, that, that, that's, what, that's what's going on right now. Don't do it, because right now you just talking a bunch of What's up? No, what I'm saying is that, you know, I, I'm already making room for her at my apartment. I'm just trying to come over. <laughs> <and go. laughs> uh, listen, there, there ain't none of that. It is whatever. If you want to come get come get But it ain't going out. We ain't, we ain't going out without a fight. I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping with you, and I'm not tripping with her. But you come to my house talking about getting from my, out of my house, then it's going down. Me and you, me and you. So what's up? You coming to get our shit? Cause I'm, I'm on the road right now in these trucks, but I'll meet you there. So if you coming to get our shit, come on with it. Okay, okay, hold up though, hold up though. Let's back up, cause see, like I say, I'm trying to handle this, you know, where we ain't gotta have no problem. All I wanna do is come in the house and get her stuff and pack it up so I can get it over to me. You think you just gonna come into my house? that I've been with all these years. You think you just gonna be, we just gonna be peaches and cream. You got me, I'm telling you, dog. You come to my house, it's going down. And that's just that. She needs to be a woman. Why don't she bring it to me? Why she didn't bring it to me? You know what I'm saying? What's up? What's out, what, what, y- y'all wanna be together now? Oh, she ain't no more. All I know is she was feeling me. That's all I'm saying. She was feeling me, you know. She and, feeling and, you, and, oh, she feeling you. Hmm. 
I mean, do you have a problem with her legal? Because that's her choice. You know what I'm saying? If she claims she want to be with me, that's what she want. You know, I ain't knocking what nobody do. You understand? But what I'm trying to tell you is she telling me she want to be with me. So I'm just trying to get you to lift up. Is it better for me and her to go over there while you ain't there and get her stuff? Dog, all this when you say I don't, I, I ain't got the rational thing with you. She needs to be the one telling me all of this. And since she can't do it, and you man, you man, you know, that's what you call for, man to man, come get up. That's all I'm hey, saying. Come hey, get up. Hey, hey, Samantha, Samantha, for real though. Hey, say man. Hey, hey, say man, my name is Sam, man. I ain't gonna tell you that no more. I already told you that when you called, when you first called. Okay, Sam. So listen. Okay, well, hey, hey, you know what? I ain't even finna go back and forth with you. Didn't chose me. I'm finna come get her. Hey, all this you talking, you still on this phone with all that jaw jacking. If you want to come get her, I didn't invited you. So if you want to bring your over here, come get it. I'm Aiden too. Oh, I whooped a two of them. Got me, but I'll tell you this much: two of them, like them, them two there, they don't want to. Me no more. They don't want to rock with me no more. Drop and like I said, send that come with you. She ought to be woman enough when she behind the back in the background, telling you to c come tell me some. Ain't that some man? I'm a and you come because you acting like a boy too. I'm a slap. So what for? Okay, well look here. Let me go and say this here to you then. Can I can I tell you what she told me? Man, you tell me whatever you want to tell me. Really, I don't what she told you. But what what's up? I just want to tell you, she told me to prank phone call you. This is Nephew Thomas <laughs> from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you all right? I'm straight, man. I'm straight. Man, y'all wrong, man. <laughs> Look here, man. Y'all had me ready. <laughs> Hey, I got to hear you say one more thing. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me Samantha no more. My name okay. is Sam, okay? Sam. Yeah. It's You've been Sam. Warned. <laughs> You've been warned. Sam was about her business. I told you that when you first called. Don't call me that no more now. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't have me Shout take my gold off and whoop your ass, because I'll do it, okay? <laughs> Big up to Sam, to Sam and her Sam. lovely lady. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. listening to the show. Appreciate uh, you. Right, thank you, Sam. We love y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Catch me Friday night, baby. Friday night on the OWN Network. Ready to love. The nephew is back at it again. Whole new season, new singles, 20. And, well, not we're, we don't have 20 no more. We started with 20. Yeah. <laughs> we, oh, and what you down to now? eliminating. I mean, we got yeah. eight? Well, you get no, rid no, of no. them fast, huh? No, no, we're not down to eight. <laughs> the first night, <laughs> Jay. They kick people off the first night. Ain't that how no. do you know? How do you know that quickly? Yeah, how do you know, Tommy? How do you know? You know, it's that first impression. You know, some people, have, yeah, you have huh? to have a good first impression on people. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, you know, if you clammed up and not used to talking, they're going to be like, mm, I don't know nothing about him. I don't know That's about right. her. Yeah. And guess what? When that starts adding up, you're gone. Yeah. But you know what, Tommy? It's bad that you don't even get to show your second outfit. That's that's yeah. just really bad. <laughs> That's what I'm about no, to say. No, what's bad, what Jay, <laughs> what's bad is when somebody then took off. You know, then took a leave from their job for a few yeah. for a month or two. You back already? <laughs> ah, it didn't work out. Ready to love. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Jay Anthony Brown, it, it's, yes. it's time for something funny. Now, you put this together, drive yeah, through workers. Yeah, I thought, I thought it might be cool that we salute different types of workers. Uh -huh. I mean, a lot of workers listen to the show, cafeteria workers, doctors, beauticians. So today we're going to salute the people who work the drive through in okay. the ignorant like stuff mm -hmm. they hear. Okay. Every right. day. <laughs> All right. For okay. instance. Let's go. Mm -hmm. No need to cuss, sir. <laughs> Breakfast <laughs> is over. Okay? <laughs> okay? All right. Why y'all why, why, why not, sir? 
Because it's, it's 2 o'clock, sir. <laughs> We're not serving breakfast anymore. Junior, you got one? <laughs> now, this is something that a lot of drive through workers go through that they have, they have every to. Day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Sir, you're going to have to get that muffler fixed so I can hear you. <laughs> I can't get this order in if you don't get the muffler fixed. Mm. <laughs> That's every day. That's a good every one. Day. Every mm. day. Tell me you got one, man. Sir, I cannot sell you two nuggets by themselves. I can't, I, we sell them in 10, 12. Come on now. I can't just give you Six, two nuggets. Now. I just, just want to get two nuggets and be gone. I can't man. do that, man. Steve, what you got, man? Sir, did you read your order on the screen? <laughs> it's, it's on the screen. <laughs> We're dealing with drive through workers, what they have to hear every single day. Yeah. Come on. Jay. Miss, you bought one large fry. You want 20 ketchups? Really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> you want you want 20? 20? You want <laughs> just wasting ketchup. Yeah. Just uh, wasting ketchup. Uh, I'll tell, I tell you what, this is one that, that he, and I know they deal with. Uh, Pull up there, the lady start talking, somebody else talking about, ma'am, look. Who's ordering? You or the baby? <laughs> I can't hear both of y'all. Mm. Who is ordering? <laughs> I can hear that every day. Salute to, we salute the, the people here in the drive. What else you got? Come on, nephew. Uh, uh, ma'am, I can't give you 30 extra napkins so you can change your baby diaper. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that, man. I can't do that, okay? We can't just give away these napkins like that. Wow. You're wrong for that. <laughs> Steve, you're up. <laughs> We McDonald's, we don't make Whoppers. <laughs> <laughs> now that has happened to everyone. I know before. that has happened. Everyone, yes. Uh, here's one, here's one. I don't know why they stopped the Mac rib. They just stopped it, okay? <laughs> we have an argument. Yeah. A full-out argument it's not a about debate. that. Yeah. 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 It, we're not it's selling a, it anymore. It's, not, it's a limited time. It's a limited that's what it means. Time. Yeah. <laughs> sir, sir, why you ain't come in if your window don't work? <laughs> why you ain't just come in here? I like it. I can't get this food to you. How come you just didn't come in? You can't get the window if you down. can't get the window down, how am I going to get the window <laughs> Drive through workers, we feel your pain. We're dealing we with what you. you go through every day. <laughs> sir, sir, ma'am, uh, ma listen, we can't. This is not where you come to book Ronald McDonald to come to your baby's birthday party. This ain't, this ain't the window for that. He's not here right now. <laughs> they want to speak to Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Steve, what you got? Ma'am, I know Chick-fil-A sandwiches is better, but this out. <laughs> Every day, though, they have Every to hear this. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know you got a complaint, mm. but you can't speak to the colonel because the colonel <laughs> is never here. Yeah. He's never been here, okay? Yeah. Stop asking for him. Yeah. You see him on TV, those well, commercials. Yeah, huh? I know you see him on TV, but he's not here. <laughs> Baby, this, this might just be only in my neighborhood, uh, <laughs> but I know it's a drive to work in the old neighborhood uh, that's saying, Look here, Larry worked from 12 midnight to 6. You got to get your drugs then. <laughs> For real, Junior. <laughs> drive through workers. <laughs> drive through workers would be your pain. Hello. It's worse than we thought, drive through workers. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Can you wake up? Your order is here. <laughs> ma'am. You got, we got 10 it. people behind you. <laughs> then fell asleep in the drive. Yeah. <laughs> Steve. Steve you, you have to order something if you're going to have all these kids in here on this playground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she just brought the kids. <laughs> 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 like it's a park. <laughs> all these kids just have to play. Man, you going to have to buy something. something. Yeah. Ice tea or something. Just something. Here, yeah. this, playground. this is not a nursery, miss. Come on, now work with us here. <laughs> <laughs> Who drives the workers go through it, don't they? Yeah, they do. Who knew? All right, uh, 
out of them like we don't have any more. That's what I mean when I say <laughs> we're out of them. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. The, what I mean is when I say we're out of them, yeah. that means we don't have any more. <laughs> what do you mean you out of them? Out of them mean like <laughs> we ain't got no more. <laughs> I don't know another way to say it. I don't know another way to say it. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to really respect that the next time I go through a drive-thru. I really am. Keisha. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Keisha, look. Look, I'm at work. You can't drop him off at the drive-thru window. I'm at work. Wait till I get off. This this is, this wrong, Keisha. (laughs) Keisha dropped the baby at the baby At the drive-thru window. This wrong. (laughs) You, but, can't you, head the you can't hit the baby through the window. You wrong for that, Keisha. Say, say, man, say, man, I don't know who you bought weed from last night, but I'm not selling weed here at, while I'm working. I don't know who you bought it from last night, but I'm, I'm not, not not me. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Steve, close it out. Drive through workers. Woo, we feel you now. We this really do. One, yes. One. Come on. Close up. it out. Uh-huh. Yeah. This the damn toy. <laughs> I don't pack the hat in here. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, yeah, we feel your pain, drive through workers. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time. <laughs> None of your darn business. <laughs> what all right, you got, things if you see going down, mm-hmm. is that what you're talking about, Shirley? If you uh-huh. see it going down, it ain't uh-huh. your business? Uh-huh. It's none of your concern? None of Like if you in the barbershop, you've been going there for years, Yeah. Uh-huh. and you see somebody take somebody else's customer, that ain't your damn business. Why are you Why? in there? Why are you in there? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Obviously he didn't like the cut he had before. From the other guy. Right. Yeah, just move on. But that's What's your not life? right, though. That's What's not... your own life? That's not, that has nothing to nothing. do with it. Nothing. The fact that the other barber's feelings going to be hurt. That, that, yeah. that, that has real. nothing to do with yeah. you. Yeah. No. He, he ain't getting his chair. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Jen? I'll tell you what. If you go in the grocery store uh-huh. and you turn your cart down aisle four and uh-huh. see a black parent choking their kids, <laughs> that ain't none of your damn business. Get back up. Yeah. yeah. Go down aisle five and get yeah. your stuff Because you can get some of that choking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do. I'm even mm. concerned. You know, I don't even need nothing on this aisle. You. Hey, <laughs> hey, what's going on? No, no, you going to be going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I wouldn't choke that kid like that as I was you. Well, you're not me, all right? <laughs> the kid can really be hurt, guys. Yeah. yeah. Sure you're going to be hurt if you go down there. If you go down there and ask what's going on, it's none of your damn business. Because that little boy know good and hell well while he getting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Told you not to touch nothing. In here touching? Let's touch this. You done broke a damn job. Don't here, put now your I got hand. to pray for it. Yeah, and choke we him. ain't going to eat it. Choke him. <laughs> Wow. What you got, Tommy? You see somebody put a cold, nice ribeye and baked potato in the refrigerator at work mm-hmm. <laughs> and can't wait for lunchtime. You see somebody else go in there and eat all that steak and baked potato. That, that ain't really How none that of my How that you? You don't know what they're going through? You're not gonna you have no wrong. idea. Hey, hey, Shirley, you don't know what that other man going through. <laughs> I know the other man's going to be mad with his lunch. You need to get you a small cooler to keep your meat in. You know what I mean? And ice it down. I got one for ladies right here. What you got? What you got? Ladies, if you see your girlfriend, Uh Uh if you see your girlfriend's fiance (laughs) at dinner Uh with another woman, Come on. That's probably more than likely a business dinner. Uh That is is. none of your damn business. How does that concern you? Go oh, buy your business. gift and go to the wedding like you're supposed to damn do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Go yeah, get your business. gift right. for where they registered at, and it's gone. That ain't your business. Ain't be- Put your <laughs> camera phone down. No, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> that, that. Oh, that's snapping a photo and yeah. sending it uh, to yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like you tell, yeah. telling on grown uh-huh. people. Uh-huh. Okay. Like, what? like she wants to hear that. She don't want to. You're going to mess up her damn day. <laughs> Now, why would you do that? With your funky behind. Yeah, why would you mess up the day that she's been planning for her whole life? And that's just you evil. coming in here because you ain't got nobody. You buy your damn. You're so. evil oh, and nasty. What you hear say it again, Jay. Evil and nasty. <laughs> You're just evil and nasty. You standing next to a guy, right? Uh-huh. Y'all in the bar. Yeah. Mm. Y'all standing in the bar, and he's on the phone saying, baby, I got to work late. 
I'm working late. I'm going to knock out this last uh, um, report, and I'm coming on home. What that got to do with you? That's right. That's <laughs> it. How does that happen? How does that affect you? <laughs> He's at the bar. He's yeah, lying, he, Jay. On the other end has nothing to do with you. <laughs> What she got, Junior? His wife needs to hear about this paper. She need a reason why he not going to be home at 6. Wants to know if he's safe. So he got to give her a reason. <laughs> he and his voice makes her feel calm and reassured that nothing is happening. That nothing is happening? Please come on back down on the end of the Hmm. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Ooh, I'll be up at that bar. I love it. Yeah. And what? Come on back down to, to the, the other end of the bar. Yeah, right. All right, Steve, let's get to the news. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Okay. Thank you, everybody. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Okay, good news, at least, hopeful. Uh, police in Beverly Hills say they've arrested a suspect in the murder of famed music producer Clarence Avon's wife, Jacqueline. He's identified as a 29-year-old parolee from Los Angeles named Ariel Maynor, whom they say has an extensive record. Authorities say they have numerous videos showing Maynor's car exiting the area near the Avon house around the time that the 81-year-old Miss Avon was fatally shot. Police also say they've recovered a gun, which, according to initial reports, appears to be linked to the murder. Nevertheless, the Beverly Hills cops repeat right now. Anyway, Ariel Maynard is merely a suspect at this point. He is, though, under arrest. Health officials documented the first case of the Omicron variant in the U.S. in San Francisco on Wednesday. And then there was another one in Michigan and a third one in Colorado. There's now one in Hawaii. But there are now five confirmed Omicron cases in New York State. But President Biden's reminding the American people that the path to protection should be well known by now. If you're worried about Omicron variant, the best thing to do is get fully vaccinated and then get your booster shot. Get your child vaccinated at one of the 35,000 locations in the country, including doctor's offices, pharmacies, children's hospitals, and 9,000 pop-up clinics at schools. Vaccinating our children is also critical to keeping our schools open. Additionally, we're increasing the availability of new medications recommended by real doctors, not conspiracy theorists. But to recap, Mr. Biden says get vaccinated, get the booster, and wear your mask. The city of St. Petersburg, Florida, canceling the inaugural ball that was planned for its very first black mayor, Ken Welsh, because he says, I'm not going. The theme is to be a circus, which many black residents of the once segregated city, including the mayor-elect, find offensive. Arizona State University says acquitted Kenosha, Wisconsin killer Kyle Rittenhouse, not an enrolled student there. They say Rittenhouse was apparently taking some online classes at ASU as a non-degree seeking student. He recently expressed, though, a desire to study on campus. But when students heard about it, there are several online protests against Rittenhouse uh, launched by ASU students and other groups demanding that the university remove the young vigilante from any. ASU classes. And finally, uh, looks like black women are making history. Five black women crowned the winners of some of the world's most prestigious beauty pageants now, including Miss Teen USA, Miss America, Miss USA, Miss Earth, and Miss World. This is the first time in history that this has happened. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, a lot of people are losing sleep because of work, guys. A new study by Account Tips finds that 44% of professionals are losing sleep over work. As for why, 50% say they've been overwhelmed with work, the volume of work they have, the hours that they have to put in. Some of the other reasons for work-related sleep loss include a strained co-worker relationships. Wow. Uh, worried that they may lose their job. Um, that's that's a lot of stress. Yeah. That's Jay. That's Jay. You got to be exhausted. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good one. My boss is a nightmare. <laughs> Have you checked all three boxes, Jay? Y'all bet not. <laughs> strain oh, co-worker. Again, okay, strain co-worker relationships. Check. Worried I may lose my job. Check. And my boss is a nightmare. No, don't check that one. Okay. So I got to ask you, Steve, you have a lot of jobs. You have more than anyone I know. Do your jobs keep you up at night? Or, or, you know, is it if they do, is it constant or just occasional? No, my exhaustion from my jobs is when I run up into stupidity. Uh That's the only thing I get exhausted from. I don't, I've, you know, I've really found out over the years, I don't really care for stupid people. I really don't. Uh-huh. Your nephew must be. Drinking. Yeah, I, I, I can't even. I can't even play it off. 
Uh-huh. Like if you're stupid, I look at you like you're stupid the whole time you talk. I don't know what we're supposed to do with that information. No, it's but... just important information that you know about me and my job. Yes. My job, I love my job. I'm, look, I tell jokes for a living and play music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of my jobs, they have an element of me using my God-given talent. Yeah. So I, I love my work. Uh-huh. It's the things that surround my work. Like, when you stupid, uh-huh. I just can't stand that, man. Is that like I Anthony Brown? No, Jay good. Jay ignorant. <laughs> oh, is it different? Stupid is, it? is yeah. different from ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid is when you're doing stuff that ain't attached to nothing and just has no rhyme or reason, but you steady doing it. <laughs> oh, anyone in particular in mind or what? just Tom. anyone? Oh. At the job. <laughs> Tom Curly. I know. I didn't think he was going to say alone. you, honestly. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, Why would I say This is uncomfortable right now. Yeah, it's awkward. Why Uh are you uncomfortable? You're not stupid. (laughs) Oh, I know. I know. You just don't like the way Tommy goes into the shell when you call him stupid. But let him go in there. When he go into the shell, he can't say nothing stupid. Well, what's the uh, but I'm he's, not, he's here I'm not, working. What are you going to do? He's working. I'm, he's employed I'm right, here. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm here. I'm right here. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm right we here. Know Stop here. doing mm-hmm. that. Stop talking over and around me. I'm right here. <laughs> we can't help the over I'm, part. All right. Li- <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time for Comedy Roulette, and uh, Jay, explain it to us, it's please. It's so simple. I mean, the people. We have to explain it every week because we get new listeners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Brand new people who listen. Man, just explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Jay. Do radio. Yes. yes. You know Steve has no yeah. patience. We have I Comedy know. Roulette. This is where we take five subjects. We put the subjects on the wheel. We spun the wheel around and around and around. Where the wheel stops, we'll do the damn thing. What are the subjects? You ready? Here we go. Number one. I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. I hope it don't stop (laughs) there. Number number two. Well, when is the baby going to sleep? (laughs) Man, that is me. (laughs) Number three. How long is he going to stay in the sixth grade? (laughs) Once again. (laughs) Number four. uh, Well, you're big and bad. Come on down here. Okay. I heard that one. Yeah, Uh yeah, yeah. Number five, I didn't get fired. They just tripping at the job. I like okay? it. I didn't get fired. <laughs> they tripping at Okay, now, and here's a bonus, number uh-huh, six. Uh-huh. Uh, if you buy cheap stuff, it, it, it doesn't last. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. Th- Bennett, Dave. You bad. Bring me a bag. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the one you want. <laughs> no, I done heard that. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, Jay, you did not want number one. Oh, what is it? I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you, uh, you, you oh, didn't yeah. want that one. No, I didn't want that one. <laughs> you know the problem is? It's you. You is the problem. I can't concentrate because of you. You doing something to me. Yeah. Make me lose my concentration. And whatever it is, stop it. <laughs> you need to focus. <laughs> yeah, that, one, that one was personal. That was, uh, yeah. That was like, yeah, Steve. That's why he didn't want it to stop on me. Man. Okay. Well, look here. Uh, look here. Uh, I want to apologize. This has never happened before. But me and the microwave went off at the same time. I want to say I'm sorry. Ding, ding, ding. I did not know I was through. And the food. Ding. ding, ding. <laughs> ding. Listen, 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 I apologize. This is the first time this has ever happened. I dreamed I was peeing, okay? All right, that's why we both laying here wet. I'm just saying, this is the first time this has ever happened, and I apologize. Okay? I was peeing in my dream, okay? Yeah, when you're 12. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You can have pee in that fifty. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Damn, baby, I'm sorry. But did I look? I, 
What? This is the first time this ever happened, but I ain't never been in a committed relationship. Before. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna believe that. that. Commitment? <laughs> no, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know the rules. I, I'm so sorry. Okay. She putting her clothes on right now, baby. Yes. <laughs> Okay, babe, I apologize. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. And since we had worked out a payment and it was so quick on my part, uh-huh. I should get some of that money back. Wow. <laughs> I, I should Who have to pay the, you, full, the full price, okay? Wow. All right. <laughs> the full price? I should have to pay that. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, listen, babe, I'm, I really, really am sorry. I know I asked for some during the commercial break. I didn't know I was going to finish. <laughs> In the commercial, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Wait a minute. SVU ain't even back on. I, 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 it ain't never happened before. <laughs> Ever. Baby, baby. Wow. Baby, listen, listen. She over here in the pool with her bikini on because I'm trying to teach her how to swing. That's all. <laughs> All right, I apologize. This is the first time this ever happened. I'm just trying to teach the girl how to swim. That's right. the only reason why she over here. That's okay. it. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. All right. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your mama. <laughs> Damn. 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 <laughs> All right, listen, uh, up next, it's the nephew, the king of pranks, with a prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, if you don't get your mama, I will. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, see, that's where you're wrong. You ain't fit to do we drawing a line now. Man. You don't get your mama. I well, will. Going to, well, now, I don't going what my mama now. over there doing. Yeah. <laughs> right now, though, it is the nephew's turn to uh, give us the prank phone call for today. What you got, Neff? The doctor's visit. Oh. The doctor's visit. Let's go, cat. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a. Hey, Roger Belton, please. He's not here. May I take a message? Um, my name is uh, uh Mark, ma'am. I'm calling from the clinic sorry, from on. Dr. Robert Goodman. Turn Goodman's that office. music down. Hold on. I'm sorry. Say that again. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I'm okay, sorry. I'm trying to reach Roger. He's not here. Okay. I'm calling from uh from the clinic from Dr. Robert office and uh-huh. I'm trying to get some information to him. When will he, do you know when he'll actually be in? No, actually I don't. Um, is everything okay? Uh, well, you know, everything's fine. I mean, not, nothing that can't be handled. Uh, but, um, we, we're trying to actually get some information to him so that, uh-huh. uh, he can actually come back in for the results. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know when I can, exp- he's supposed to be here now. So I'm not sure when I can tell you he's going to be back. Okay. Who, but... who am I? Who, I'm sorry. I, I didn't ask you earlier, man. Who am I actually speaking with? This is his girlfriend. Uh, and your name is? Jan. Jan. Okay. So, uh. Jan, you don't. You say you don't know. You have, you don't have an idea when he'll be back. No, you, you're starting to make me kind of get a little concerned, though. No, no, no. Wow. Okay. I tell you what. This is the number that he actually left us to give him a call on his results, and we're not getting an answer. I don't have another number on hand. Do you have any a specific time I can actually call back and and maybe I'll get him? I, again, I'm a. You, you're making my my stomach is getting nervous right now. What what is what is the problem? Well, actually, you know, uh, what it is, ma'am, is, is Mr. Roger came in for uh, to take a few tests, and he took some tests, and we actually have the results in, and we'd actually really like for him to come well, back. I don't know anything about. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I don't know anything about any tests. He he hasn't told me anything about going to a clinic or anything like that. I see. So, wh- what kind of tests are you talking about? Well, I mean, uh, ma'am, I'm not. I'm really not at liberty to give you any kind of information unless you're actually on the paperwork. So, I, you know, it's not even something that I can discuss unless the patient has signed off that uh, you are the next of kin or the person that can we can well, actually give I'm, the information to. You, you do understand pretty, that, don't you? I, I do, and, I, and I'm pretty certain. I mean, the way we operate in this house, so I'm pretty certain that that I'm on the the paperwork. So, would you please go? Uh, check? Let me pull up Roger's stuff sure. and, on, on computer here, and I'll see what I. Give me one second, please. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Now, let me scroll down for next of kin. 
Okay, I got a Janice. That is me. I mean, everybody calls me Jan, but that's me, Janice. Wow. Okay, what, Ms. Tell me your name again. I'm sorry. What's your name again? Mark, Mark. This is, like this I said, I'm the clerk here Mark. at Dr. Uh, Robert office. And I guess I am at liberty to tell you what's going on. Please do. Mr. Uh, Roger came in and took uh, some STD tests. STD? Yes. And, and I guess at this point, I should just maybe both of you guys should come in. And wait so a we minute. Can wait a minute. What and you, everybody, and wait everybody a minute, will wait be a fine. No, 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 no. No. I need you to finish what you were just saying. Well, no, that's what I'm saying, man. What has happened is he's been diagnosed with um, as well as You got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, l just l I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing this. Ms. I am Janice, not. Hang on, hang on a second. That means, Janice, I think you, do you right understand now. what that means? Do you understand that he lives in my household? Do you I, I, understand that that means that he has been dipping somewhere else? Because I have been not doing anything that would even come close to bringing something to him like that. So it's apparent that this man has been outside of my household and doing what he has no business doing and bringing it back in. Ma'am, ma so I'm, I'm not at liberty to make any accusations like that. I cannot say anything like that. All I can say is I'd like for both of you, you know, it'd be good for both of no. you guys to come in no, and no, get no, treated. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. Let me, it is, let, this is something treatable. It is curable. Uh, I don't you know, care it, about it being treatable or curable. What I care about is the fact that he apparently has been somewhere with some trick and brought something back home to my household. That's what I care about. And I, I do understand that, Ms. Janice. I do. But you have to understand my position and what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to reach out and, and... Well, listen, you happen to call my household. You just happen to have to be on the, end. You're on the other side of it. I'm sorry you're getting most of it. But I tell you what, what you need to do is you need to make him an appointment, and I will meet him there. Uh, he will be wait, 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 when he wait, sees wait. my uh, face. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry? You need to make him an appointment to come out to take a look at these results you're talking about, and guess who will show up at the door before he gets there? Me. That's I think it would be, do. I mean, since you're the Mexican, Mexican, wouldn't it be better for you just to, Listen, to tell him what's going on since I've explained no, it to you? No, this is the plan. You need to give him, you need to give him a call. I'm going to give you a cell phone number. You yes, have a pen. I, yes, I have a pen. Okay, I got it. Okay. You call him and set a 12 noon appointment. Trust me when I tell you, when he walks through that door and sees my face, he will know. Okay, okay, but... Ms. Ms. Janice, I'm not trying to create chaos you, in our clinic. That's, that's, not, that's not the purpose that's of this call. All I want to talk about the call is, is, to, is to let Mr. Roger know that we need him to come actually into the building. I could give two <laughs> about a call. All I know is you make that appointment, I will get there before he gets there, and it's on. I'm telling you, that's how it's going to roll. I, Do you um, understand me? Hey, hey Ms., Ms., Ms. Janice, I can't allow any chaos to be going on in the building. I cannot allow that. Let right me now, tell you you're, something. You're creating let chaos. me tell you something. I don't. Care, I could care less about what you feel about it and what you can and can't I do. I'm not that, interested. Miss, 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 All I'm telling you is you call my house. I understand it, but I call as I'm looking not, for not, Mr. Roger. Uh, uh, and you called his soon to be wife. Uh, you know uh, what? Correction, correction. Soon to not be wife. Okay, okay. I got one more thing I do need to tell you though, Miss Jane. You know what? I can't deal with another thing. I swear to God, don't tell me okay, anything else. Uh, but I do have a, a one piece of information that I do I need to. Just make the appointment. That's all I care about. You make the appointment. I will make the appointment, but I need you to ask for somebody when you come to the clinic. I need you to ask for one person, and then they will take care of you. Who, who do I need to ask for? Okay, you need to ask for nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, because that's who I am. You just got pranked by your husband, Roger. <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> oh, my. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, 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 I listen to you every morning. I said, no. Oh, my goodness. I am so embarrassed. And wait till I see Ryan. Tommy. Are you all right? Oh, my gosh. I am extreme. I am over. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I can't believe you did that to me. Hey, I got, I got one more thing I got to ask you. Okay. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The one I wake up to every morning, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Come oh, on. Uh-uh. Come on. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. Come on. Get a prank of Why did you do oh, that to her? Yeah. Get you a prank of okay. Oh, I felt her pain. Wow. Oh, what is all this feeling sorry for her for? How was the prank? What did you tell her? <laughs> when, wouldn't it be funny if he really gave her you. disease, though? Wouldn't that be really funny? <laughs> <What>? <laughs>
<laughs> oh my God! Uh, yeah. Good one, Tommy. That's a good one, man. Thank you, really man. Good. Thank you, Jay. Oh, it's just, she you don't think you oh go I too felt far? for her. I oh, my heart just sank. Oh for my her. God, bro! Oh, How did you feel head. about the prank? I, mean, man. I guess that's why they call you the king of pranks. He, no, oh. he ain't the king. He's the king. He's oh, the that king. too. Oh. The king of pranks. Oh, and I am man. rising to be the prank. I am rising to be the king of grits. You hear me? Just good grits. G R I T Z. I'm getting so much. So many people hit me back, let me know how they like the grits. And I'm just letting y'all know, y'all got to try them. Just good grits. I even got chefs hit me up. I'm sending them out. Oh my God. I promise you, y'all, y'all just, just go by them. Let me know what you think. Shoot your boy email. And, uh, you know, we're going we gonna to rise these grits to the top. I promise you, you do not have a flavor like I got. Just yeah. good grits. G R I T with a Z on the end. Just good grits.com. Hey, it's cool, yeah. man. I'm going to go buy some. I ain't going to buy the first pack, though. I work with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They coming, Junior. You I got you. See. Thank you, nephew. Up next, wow. uh, <laughs> about four minutes after, it's today's Strawberry Letter subject. If, if, you, if you don't get your mama, I will. It's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now, guys, for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, on dating, on sex, on work, on parenting, and more, please submit your letter to the SteveHarveyFM.com crew and click Submit Strawberry Letter, and we'll take care of you. We'll read your letter live. It could be your letter live on the air, like we're reading this one, right? Right. Mm-hmm. i answer Right, myself. right, right. So yeah. let's get to it. <laughs> Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, if you don't get yo mama, that's what it says in the title. If you don't get yo mama, I will. Dear Steve, Steve, uh, dear Steve and Shirley, I have found the man of my dreams, and we've been together for five years. We have one child together, and I'm pregnant with our second child. Our relationship is great, but my boyfriend's mother is a huge problem, and I'm fed up with her inserting herself into every aspect of our lives. She comments on how we parent, our finances, my decorating style, how I cook, and my housekeeping skills. Recently, our child was sick, and she caused a big scene in the hospital saying that it was my fault for not taking better care of her grandchild. My child is young, and she constantly critiques him, which makes him not like her very much. Last week, she told me that she hopes the new baby is not a brat like my toddler. My boyfriend seems to overlook her insults when she goes in on him, but it's hard for me to hear her telling him that he's a sorry excuse for a man. I have told her that her behavior is unacceptable, and she said that she's just giving us much-needed advice and constructive criticism because we're young and don't know anything. Stephen Shirley, we are in our early 30s, and we can take care of ourselves. I'm starting to think that she might be right about my boyfriend being sorry because he won't talk to her about her foul mouth and bad attitude. I have told him that she is no longer welcome in our home and that I do not want her to have a relationship with our new baby. I don't need this stress during the last trimester of my pregnancy. How can I get this man to step up and get his mom in check? Please advise. All right, first of all, let me tell you this. Not welcoming her in your home and not wanting her to have a relationship with the new baby, that's kind of harsh, okay? Now, is your boyfriend a mama's boy? I have to say yes to that. I have to say also that you're right. Your man should be checking his mom in a respectful way. She is too messy. She is too involved in your relationship. She's too petty. She does need to get her some business. I'm in agreement with all of that. But unless he says something to her, uh, she's not gonna. She's not gonna pull up. Uh, you've already said something, but you, you're right. You don't need this kind of stress in your last tri- trimester of your pregnancy. But but how dare she though? I mean, what what's with all this disrespect? Has has this been going on for the entire five years? I can't believe you guys have allowed it to go on for so long. And I'm gonna ask you this: Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that you guys aren't married? Five years, two kids later, uh, that's a lot, maybe. You know, she might be messy and all of that, you know, with her ways and everything, but she might also be old school, and she wants you to, to stop having children and making, you know, making babies and all this and go ahead and tie the knot. You know, may, maybe that's where this is really coming from. Just something to think about there. Steve? The mama is out of line. Yeah. Mm. Period. 
This ain't got nothing to do really with the boy or the girl. The mama is way out of line. Now, with that being said, whose job is it to check her? The son. But Shirley hit it. This a mama's boy now, and we got a little problem. But I got news for you. He doesn't even have to be a mama's boy. Because it's not that he's over there all the time. It's that she interjects herself into y'all's every aspect of your life. And you just won't get him to say nothing. The dude that don't say nothing to his mama is really not because he's a mama's boy. This ain't nothing new to him. Let me get to the letter. She comments on how we parent, our finances, my decorating style, how I cook, my house cleaning. And then your child got sick and she calls a big scene at the hospital saying it was my fault for not taking better care of her grandchild. Is this half a crazy? Whoa. That's how you get a person arrested. That's how you get child protective services. That's how you get children taken from people. Mm. She's got to be crazy. Once you start making these statements in a hospital, they start checking real close. Yeah, yeah. My child is young and she constantly critiques him, which makes him not like her very much. See, this is an old battle axe right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's an old battle axe. Battle axe. Yeah. I ain't they don't even make them like this. No more. <laughs> this heifer right here, she ain't happy with herself. So she ain't happy with you, the way you parent, the way you clean, the way you cook. She ain't happy with the grandchild. She ain't happy with her son. This is an old, old battle axe. <laughs> Last week, she told me she hopes the new baby is not a brat like my toddler. Is she serious? What's wrong with her, man? Mm-hmm. Is she just a nasty person? My boyfriend seems to overlook her insults when she goes in on him, but it's hard for me to hear her telling him that he's a sorry excuse for a man. She raised him. <laughs> it's her son. Mm-hmm. You a sorry excuse for a man. You raised him. So, you know, let's get some of these fingers pointing at you. I told her that her behavior is unacceptable and she said that she's just given us much needed advice and constructive criticism. Take the word constructive out. It's just criticism. Mm. And it's not much needed. It's that you do it all the time because you funky. Because you ain't happy with yourself. She says she's doing that because you're young and you don't know anything. Steve and Shirley, we're in our early 30s and we can take care of ourselves. Yeah. I'm starting to think she might be right about my boyfriend being sorry. Okay, she's winning now. Mm. Once she gets you over there leaning that, that right there, she winning. Don't let her do it. Your dude ain't sorry. He just won't talk to her about her foul mouth and bad attitude. You know why? This ain't new to him. He grew up with her. Her bad attitude and foul mouth, he grew up with it. He don't even hear it no more. It's the norm for him. This is new to you. So what you tripping on, he's made the adjustment to. He don't even hear her. Wow. Wow. He been cut her out. Hi, right, Steve. Hang on. We'll have part two of your response to today's strawberry letter. If you don't get your mama, I will. At 23 after the hour, right get after your this. Mama. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. If you don't get your mama. Recap. The old mama is an old bad lax. <laughs> she not happy. <laughs> she bitter. She evil. <laughs> she don't like nothing. She done based this woman out in the hospital. Damn near got her in trouble. Talk about you hoping the new baby ain't like this brat you done raised. Wow. Wow. That's she really, evil. Yeah. She don't like the way the lady cook, clean, do house, mm. parent, nothing. Surprised she she didn't evil. Say she was ugly. <laughs> she say her son is a sorry excuse for a man. Oh, that's who she raised. Now, I'm starting to think she might be right about my boyfriend being sorry. He's not. He's just used to her. Because he won't talk to her about her foul mouth and bad attitude. Once again, because he used to her. He grew up with the foul mouth and attitude. That's just how his mama is. Mm. She didn't just get this way. I've told him that she is no longer welcome. I've told him that she's no longer welcome in our home. And then I do not want her to have a relationship with our new baby. Okay, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. I got she ain't cool at all. But two wrongs ain't going to make it right. You told your husband that his mama ain't welcome in our home no more. You got him in a bad spot. Right. You got him in a horrible spot. Because as crazy, as wrong as she is, it's still his mama. He love her. I don't need this stress during my last trimester of my pregnancy. 
How can I get my man to step up and get his mom in check? His mom has never been in check. <laughs> this ain't new. So I don't know. You know, he's got to sit his mom down and go, Mom, this is my family. I love them. Yeah. And he's got to make the case in point to her so she can lighten up. Or you're going to lose, you know, us. Because I'm not going to keep bringing my girl around for this here for you to do this to her. And maybe she'll come around. I don't know. But I don't think she will. Because she old, old help. And she what? Old battle ass. <laughs> battle ass. <laughs> <laughs> old, old battle ass. Old battle ass. I'm talking about cranky with an anchor on her. Big old rusty anchor. She is mean, though. She is a mean She's mean a woman. mean woman, man. She is. It's hard to deal with people that yeah, stink. She did everything but call her ugly. She really did. She insults her everything. Her cooking, her cleaning, her decorating style, how they parent, their finances. <laughs> call the baby a brat. <laughs> right. Call the baby a brat. Said uh, uh, her husband, as a, a boyfriend, is a side excuse for a man. Yeah. And then she said they need it. They need her advice because they're young and they don't know anything. They in their 30s. They're in their 30s. <laughs> man. Yeah. And then she's pregnant with their second child. Who? She's right. She doesn't need that kind of stress. No, she don't. Y- your main concern is the health of your baby. Right. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he definitely needs to sit down and, and, and talk to his mom. Maybe they can do it together. You know, look. Let's try together to get along as a family. Mama? Huh? Together. You mean together with the baby mom? Yeah. I mean, they maybe the two of them can set the mom down and say, look, we, we can't do this. Because if they permit, present a united front to the mom, maybe she'll get it. Mm-hmm. And where where's the dad? Where's her husband? She doesn't have one in all this. Ain't nobody finna live with her. <laughs> <laughs> he been gone. Yeah. He been oh, gone. Surely. She he left when he was a boy. Who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, her husband. I gotta when go. He, son, was can't take he yeah. left when the oh, um, when the son yeah. was. I yeah, love you, son. son. <laughs> and he got hit by a car when he was eight, probably. Oh, <laughs> no, <God. laughs> No, I'm just saying his father might not be in his life at all, nor is he trying to get back yeah. over there because he got to deal with her. Yeah, but they got to do something because I, I, you know, like I said, I think it's harsh if she doesn't want her in the new baby's life and not to come over there anymore. They have to work this she out. She don't like the her. first baby. Yeah. Yeah, she called him a brat, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's a, she's a mean, mean one. Mrs. Well, Grinch. got that mama right there, man. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. He probably tunes her out. Oh, he don't even yeah. hear her no more. Mm-hmm. No. But does she just walk up in their house and start talking, or what? Uh, how does she get in there? They have to let her in. Son, probably open the door. Yeah. They're, yeah, that's his mama. They're yeah. gonna have to sit and sit her down and really, really talk to her and tell her mm-hmm. about herself in a respectful way. Hmm. Good luck with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but her right. her question is, how can she get her man to step up and get his mom in check? Maybe if they both do it together, because yeah, his his her son has tuned him out, tuned her out, like you say, Steve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, completely tuned. It's mm-hmm. it's such a bad case right here because you know just put an ultimatum down about. The mama can't come over the house no more, yeah. and I don't have a relationship with the child because her mother's so evil to her first baby. Yeah, yeah. And then, Shirley, there's something to play with them not being married, but it wouldn't matter to her. She's an evil woman regardless. Right, right, yeah. She might can be using the fact that they're not married as the excuse, but she would be nasty to the girl if they were married. Yeah, All right, guys, we got to get out of here. You can post your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM and check out our Strawberry Letter podcast on demand, okay? Our Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. You can hear today's letter. Coming up next, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for our chief love officer, the CLO, the one and only Steve Harvey. Steve, you know, you get to answer questions from our listeners. I'm Junior Chief, too. Yeah. Hey, 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 
Stay in your pranks. Ain't nobody writing for you. Yeah. I just, stay I, in your pranks. Stay in your pranks. With you. Stay in with your pastor. Stay all that there. Right. You ain't in this. All right. Uh, yeah, see, Jay, you, you, you got to stop yesterday. stupid before you get stupid. Can't get. I'm not loose. in it. I didn't say nothing. I'm but not, let I know me tell you, you what, did, you, that what, what your mean, team member said. You the only one nobody love though. Your team member oh. said, "If you're the chief, what am I?" That's what he asked Steve. And he gave him a list of titles. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a whole lot of stuff. He was, but what he wasn't was the Chris CLO. <laughs> But, Steve, uh, these are from grown women, okay? These are from good and grown women who need your advice. This one's from Sarah out of New Orleans. She says, Steve, I'm 61. I'm sexy with my Angela Davis fro. I'm in love, and I can't get enough of my man. I want him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, morning, noon, and night. He's 65, and we have such great chemistry. There's one problem. He's been married for the past 30 years, but he says he wants to leave her for me. (laughs) I hope he isn't just leading me on. Should I trust him? (laughs) Excuse me, lady. Have you not heard this before? Right. I mean, you're 61. You've never heard of a married man saying he wants to leave her. Anybody who wants to leave somebody and is really wanting to go can leave. He's been married for 30 years. He ain't going nowhere. He's 65. Let me tell you why he can't leave. He can't mess up his pension. He Mm. can't mess up his Medicare. Come on. He can't mess up his insurance. He too (laughs) close to the tape to make an idiotic move like this. Now, too close to the tape. He damn near out. (laughs) He done done lived way more than he got left. Don't to talk to line. a man this close to the damn tape and ask him to make 30-year-old decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. on the back nine of golf. He's on the back yeah. nine. He's on the back nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 17th hole. <laughs> Fourth right. quarter, baby. Goal line. Lady, mm-hmm. you got it. He has a wife. It's not you. Nope. You're the chick on the side. You know why it's so good? Because y'all ain't got no bills together. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't got no Medicaid together. No Y'all ain't kids. trying to make no house notes together. Y'all ain't got no grandkids. Y'all ain't trying to re- prepare for retirement. That's why it's great. Go put that other stuff on it. You ain't gonna like his ass no more. He's ahead, down man. to the little bit of milk left in the cereal. That's what he is down to. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all stupid. <laughs> With the Coming up at 34 <laughs> minutes after the hour, uh, we'll have more from the CLO right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, here's a question for you. Since you're the uh, CLO, the Chief Love Officer, all right. How long do you think it takes before couples, you know, have the talk about how to label their relationship? And I'm asking you that because a new study. This is according to a new study. Uh, it says that it takes, on average, six weeks to have what um, you know the what we are talk and to label the relationship. Well, you know, when you have the talk about your relationship and putting labels on where are we going, where, you know, isn't it kind of what are awkward? we doing? You know, well, what, I what mean, are we where doing? Where you should have it at is at a restaurant, at the house. No, 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 no. I said, you know, like when, what, when in the, what time in the relationship should we have it? I think ninety days. Okay. I think for a woman's sake, I think a woman has to get a determination, get some type of idea of where this is going. Okay, and when she finds that out, just give it up because that's ninety days. That's well, you know, day you don't have to do it like that. <laughs> that's you said that's a guideline, a minimum. Ninety don't mean day. give it up, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, Steve. Boy. But you know, uh, um, ninety days, you should have an idea where it's going. Mm-hmm. You have every right to know and ask a man where this is headed. Okay, another question, Steve. How should they bring it up? How, how yeah. should you broach that subject? Not the by no damn text messages, that's for sure. Well, you know, you know if how. a woman is curious about <laughs> where, what the relationship is, she got to bring it up. If a man wants to define it, he needs to bring it up. But And how should they do that? That was my original Hey, question. where are we going? Huh? Oh, just right out with it. I huh, said, Steve? where are we going? What is all this? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> In that tone, though? No. But that's the man, because <laughs> that can't be the woman. <laughs> mm. oh, yeah, well... Wow. Hello? <laughs> wait, Shirley, don't rush past that. Wait, wait a minute. You Hello? don't know who that could be. I'm just well, asking. I think, too, though, Steve, don't you think that... 
I don't know, for women, sometimes they might feel it's kind of awkward or they don't know how to do that, to just come right out with it and say, hey, where are we going with this relationship? Yeah, what what are we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you you just saying come right on out with it? Well, I mean, you know, you could try it like roundabout. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. My girlfriends are starting to ask me what type of relationship is this? What, um, what should I say? Okay. You know, so what good. should that's I be saying suggestion. to people? And let him give you an idea. Yeah, that's what I, that's, now that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. How? That's what I figured you meant. (laughs) But that's good, CLO. That's good. So wait like 90 days to even bring up the talk and kind of ease into it, you're saying. Kind of ease into it, right? 90 days, Mm -hmm. ladies, you have every right to be able to say, okay, so what do we have? Especially if 90 days you start passing out that cookie. There's no reason for you to pass out the cookie and not understand what it is. Okay. You know, if okay, we're I if like we're this. in a committed relationship, you should know that. Absolutely. I'd I'd want to know that before I passed out the cookie. Yeah. Right. Uh, is this a monogamous relationship? Are we committed? Exclusive. Are we exclusive? Mm-hmm. What is it? Mm-hmm. I need to know. Okay. You know that <laughs> makes sense, don't? It? Oh yes, yes, yes. And then you say when you want to bring the subject up, you kind of ease into it. You know, just slide it to them. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Hey, look, um, you know we've been dating for a while, and my girlfriends and. Co-workers are starting to ask me, what is this we have? So, I mean, how would you like for me to address you or describe you when I'm talking to other people? Mm-hmm. You know, kind of put it on them a little bit. Yeah. And what and what should the woman say if the man asks her? Or will a man ask her that question? Oh, oh yeah, 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 of course. Uh, there are and, dudes that want to know. Uh-huh. And what should the woman say? You know, the truth. I mean, you know, a guy could say, hey, baby, look, we've been at this for a little while. Are we exclusive or no? And then if it's exclusive, you got to tell him yes. And if it's not, then you just got to say, hey, no, it's not really exclusive. I'm seeing some other people. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, and thank they gonna you. they're going to call you out your name. Or <laughs> right. <laughs> no, just exactly. Yeah. Thank you, CLO. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. How are you? I'm fine. I mean, what? It's so typical of me oh, to my talk God. about myself. Then let it go, Adele, please. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, a lot of people are losing sleep because of work, guys. A new study by Account Tips finds that 44% of professionals are losing sleep over work. As for why, 50% say they've been overwhelmed with work, the volume of work they have, the hours that they have to put in. Some of the other reasons for work-related sleep loss include uh, strained co-worker relationships. Wow. Uh, worried that they may lose their job. Um, that's that's a lot of stress. Yeah. That's, that's Jay. That's Jay. You Every- got to be exhausted. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good one. My boss is a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> Have you checked all three boxes, Jay? Y'all better not. <laughs> strained co-worker. Again, okay, strained co-worker relationships. Check. Worried I may lose my job. Check. And my boss is a nightmare. No, don't check that one. Okay. So <laughs> I got to ask you, Steve, you yeah. have a lot of jobs. You have more than anyone right. I know. Do your jobs keep you up at night? Or, or, you know, is it if they do, is it constant or just occasional? No, my exhaustion for my jobs is when I run up into stupidity. Mm. Uh-huh. That's the only thing I get exhausted for. I don't, I've, you know, I've really found out over the years I don't really care for stupid people. I really don't. Uh-huh. Your nephew must be drunk. Yeah, and I, I can't even, I can't even play it off. Uh-huh. Like, if you're stupid, I look at you like you're stupid the whole time you talk. I don't know what we're supposed to do with that information. No, it's but... just important information that you know about me and my job. Yes. My job, I love my jobs. I'm Look, I tell jokes for a living and play music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of my jobs they have an element of me using my God-given talent. Yeah. So I, I love my work. Uh-huh. It's the things that surround my work, like when you stupid. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just can't stand that, man. Is that like I J. Anthony Brown? No, Jay good. Jay ignorant. <laughs> oh, is it different? Stupid is, it, yeah. is different from ignorant. Yeah, different. Stupid is when you're doing stuff that ain't attached to nothing and just has no rhyme or reason what you steady doing. 
Oh, any one in particular in mind, or what? Just Tom. anyone. Oh. At the job. <laughs> Tom, early. I uh, know. I didn't think he was gonna Let say alone. you honestly. Um. Okay. Uh, Why would I say this is uncomfortable right now? Yes, yeah, awkward. Why uh-huh. are you uncomfortable? You're not stupid. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Well, you just don't like the way that Tommy goes into the shell when you call him stupid. But let him go in there. When he go into the shell, he can't say nothing stupid. Well, what's the uh, but I'm he's, not, he's here I'm not, working. What are you going to do? Yeah. He's working. I'm, he's employed I'm right. here. Hello, everyone. I'm here. I'm right here. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm right we here. Know Stop here. doing mm-hmm. that. Stop talking over and around me. I'm right here. <laughs> we can't help the over I'm, part. All right, coming up, the last break of the day. Steve will have some closing remarks for us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back at 49 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, we've come to the end of the road for this week. This is our last break of the day on this Friday. Leave us with some closing remarks, please, Well, you sir. know something, man? What? I'm not going to take long to tell you this. But the, what's the old saying? That the grass is always greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you hear that, what they're saying is almost like a warning to people. Be careful because it always appears that the grass is greener on the other side. And so many people spend their life Standing at the fence, looking at somebody else's grass, and then acknowledging the fact that they grass is greener. It causes you to do nothing about your own yard. And then some people have the audacity, and you see it on the internet all the time, that if they look over there and your grass is greener, they try to kill the grass or throw some weeds in it. But you know what I come away with? I don't worry about that. Because here's what I know. I'm too busy working on my own grass to notice if yours is greener. (laughs) That's really the truth. I'm really so busy working on my own grass that I don't have time to notice if yours is greener. Because if it is greener, let's suppose your grass is greener. Why can't mine be just as green? I ain't saying we gonna have the same yard. We just talking about the color of the grass that's in your yard. You don't have to have the same size house I got. You ain't got to have the same size house Eddie got. You ain't got to have the same size house Oprah got. You ain't going to have the same size yard they got. But if you take care of your business, you can have grass just as green as everybody else if you just handle your business. The goal in life is to get your grass to be as green as it can. So when you go outside to pick your crops, it got some fruit to bear. And God will always supply your needs. So even though it may look like somebody got more fruit in their orchard, let me tell you something. If you can't, if you got an orchard full of apple trees, a thousand apple trees, and I got one apple tree in my yard, but you got a thousand apple trees in your yard, when it's time to eat, how many apples can you eat? Let's say you eat six apples that make you full. My one tree got six apples on it. So we both full. See, at one point in time, you're going to have to get content with where you are in your process of the journey. Stop looking at everybody's grass. Stop looking at everybody's orchard. They grass greener than mine. They got more apple trees than mine. Hey, man, eat the apples off your tree. You might find out that you have enough. But if you quit wearing and counting mine, you're going to mess around and let worms get on yours. I'm too busy working on my own grass to even notice that your grass is greener. 
Change your commitment to everybody else from everybody else's business. Change your commitment to your business. If you the time you spent worrying about them, looking at them, talking about them, if you took that same amount of time and spent it on yourself, you have any idea what you could accomplish? That's why haters, man, are in so much trouble, man. You don't even understand. Let people hate all they want. They tend into too many other people's business. Don't get in the hate business. It serves nobody. And that's another thing. Somebody asked me how do I deal with my haters. I keep all my haters in my classroom. I just got them watching me. Because that's all they can do. They can't stop nothing God has for me. They can't take away one blessing God gives me. They can't do nothing to me. You can't bring no harm on me that I won't be able to survive. I'm not saying that it don't bother me sometimes. I don't, I'm not saying that people don't attack me sometimes. But when you get through attacking me, I'm going to weather your storm. I'm Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. I can walk through the rivers and not be overturned. The waters will not overtake me. I can walk through the fire and not be burned, nor will kindling set upon my clothing. I done been through some fiery situations and came out on the other side, and it, there was no kindling. There was no signs that I was even in a fire. Now understand something. What that scripture does not say that when you walk through the fire, that it ain't going to be ungodly hot in there. It's been plenty hot for me on plenty of days, many occasions. Oh, I done made some mistakes in front of the world before. I done had to deal with some stuff. But when I got through, wasn't no signs that I was ever in a fire. That's the God I serve. I have no concern about what people say they are gonna do to me. I have no concern about how green your grass is on the other side. I have no concern about how many apple trees in your orchard I'm too busy tending to my own grass to even notice that yours is greener and if I do look over there congratulations on your beautiful green yard I'm getting mine there too that's all it is fix your attitude change your attitude you'll change your altitude those are my closing remarks sure drop the mics P. <laughs> that was that good, was baby. Right that was good. That was that very was good. profound. Yeah, you take us it. home. For the Have weekend. a great weekend for yeah. sure.